What UCLA doesn't know is that I wrote one of these on the morning of November 30th. And the application deadline, by the way, is November 30th. Hey everybody! So today I'm going to be reading the UC Personal Insight question essays that I submitted to the UC transfer application in fall 2018. I'll touch on this later, but I was admitted to UCLA, waitlisted at UCI, and rejected at Berkeley. I know it's my tendency to put things off, so I told myself that I should be writing the first drafts at the very latest by October, since the application is due in November. However, October came and passed, and then it was getting really late in November, and I still had classes and homework and everything, and yeah, the essays were not magically appearing. I think it's something like the pressure of the essays having to be perfect, or at least the very best they could be, that paralyzed me from starting. So yeah, I have to laugh when I hear people talking about they wrote their essays in the summer or the year before. I, I would have never done that. It's the middle of October now, so maybe some of you guys are in that predicament where you know you have an application due soon, but you haven't started yet. Admittedly, I'm a borderline school defector and I dislike the college process and I did my best to perform college evasion, but in the end I failed and ended up at UCLA. So I did not participate in what I perceived to be a ridiculously pressure-filled and more competitive freshman admission process, but hopefully you can still get something out of this video whether you're a freshman or a transfer applicant. So before I get started reading these, I do want to preface that these are transfer essays, and from my experience taking transfer college tours, I got the impression that the emphasis in transfer applications is more on your GPA and your college school record, and not as much on the essays. Not that the essays aren't very similar to the freshman ones, but I just got the impression that they weren't weighed as heavily. The topics are also a little bit different. The prompts are pretty much the same, but as a transfer, I focused on emphasizing my experience at community college and how I was ready for my major, whereas I think freshmen aren't expected to be as set for their major, or they shouldn't be expected to be. Okay, let's get to reading. I'll try to provide my thoughts two years later and explain my thought process. Alright, so these essays all had to be under 350 words. For transfers, there's one required question, and then you pick three from the remaining prompts. The required question here is transfer specific, so it's specifically asking about how you've prepared for your intended major. And I just want to give some context here. When I sent in my application, out of the three colleges I ticked off, I only realistically hoped to get into UCI. The chances of getting into UCLA as an out-of-state communications major were astronomically low, and I wasn't going to Berkeley even if I got in. My mom just wanted to see what decision I'd get. The thing is, UCI doesn't have a communications major, but it does have one of the most famous data science undergraduate programs. And I did data science a little in college, so in this essay I had to pretend like my major was both communications and data science, since the same essay was going to UCLA and UCI. In my daily life, I enjoy learning interesting things and conveying them to other people in all sorts of situations. Whether it's convincing someone that I'm innocent in a mafia game, diagramming the members of my orchestra, or studying the inner workings of video games so that I can enter into the discussion surrounding esports. And I want my education to intertwine with that passion. For a long time, my interests were so widespread that I could not even narrow down whether I wanted to study something in the humanities or STEM. But when I discovered communications and data science, I knew I had found the majors that could empower me to become a unique ambassador between the two disciplines. I pursued communications not only by taking and planning to take classes for the degree, such as communications theory, linguistics, interpersonal communication, and news writing, but also by involving myself in extracurricular activities that helped give me a practical sense of the field. For example, I joined the campus's student-run newspaper as a news reporter. As a part of the newsroom, I've teamed up with others to work towards the mission of informing the student body and improving unity on campus. One assignment that I'm proud of is an obituary that I wrote for a well-respected professor who passed in August that touched his colleagues and family. Data science is only a certificate program at Montgomery College, but I was excited to learn strategies for turning my rudimentary spreadsheet hobby into a real powerful engine for discovering data-driven insights and change. I was enthused that clear communication was the emphasis of the program, since presentation of data is only useful when its significance is clear to anybody. I've never envisioned myself becoming a cutting-edge engineer or a best-selling author, but I think that my jack-of-all-trades tendency puts me in a special position to serve as a link between people in separate fields. 
I hope to combine my love for numbers and my love for words into a skill that can facilitate understanding and create a more connected, loving world. Yeah, so my angle here, obviously I was focusing on trying to explain both communications and data science, uh, but I was also talking about how I'm still kind of in the middle. I still do like doing both STEM-ish and humanities-ish things, but I'm not like a STEM person and I'm not really a humanities person. So in this essay, I was trying to explain how I would be a great person to be down the middle because if I understand how STEM works, I can help humanities people work together with STEM people and understand them, and I can help STEM people understand humanities people and work together. And you know, when people from different fields work together, things are better. So that's the kind of communications major I want to be, someone who connects people who actually have the talent, because I don't have any talent, but I think I would be good at helping people with talent to work together. So that's what I was going for in this essay. In the beginning here, I started by providing specific examples of things I'm interested in that kind of make me more of a human, and then just storytelling a little bit, a paragraph of communications, and specifically going into details about how I'm prepared for my major, which answers the question, and also doing so with data science in its own paragraph, and then bringing it all together in kind of my moral of the story for a conclusion. All right, let's go on to the second one. And this one is the creativity essay. I think this might have been the one I wrote on November 30th. I don't exactly remember. Kind of went meta on it and tried to be creative about being creative. I don't know if it worked out or not, but here we go. Creativity is not something I express through any one medium. Rather, creativity is the medium itself. My imaginative strength lies in the fact that I rarely do something the same way twice and often in an ambitious style. If my stuffed animals needed clothes, I sewed them something together with scraps. When Doll World needed a census database tool, I programmed a website with SQL integration. If there was a song I wanted to play with friends, I listened to the track countless times, carefully notating and arranging the music so that we could enjoy it together. For my AP government poster project, I forewent pasting together clip art for a full poster illustration in crayon. One year, I knit an entire dress for Halloween just so that I could customize it to match Snow Day Syndra's as closely as possible. For my 17th birthday, I designed a puzzle hunt at a shopping center and challenged my friends to search the different stores for clues and crack my puzzles in order to figure out where lunch would be. When I wanted to produce singing covers for YouTube, I taught myself video editing and digital art in order to bring my vision to life. My passion for video games and esports drove me to author nearly 70 blog posts over the past four years. Every time I imagine something that I'm going to invent, I don't always have all the abilities I need to make it happen going in. But I know that because it exists in my mind, I can learn everything I need to make it reality and pick up new skills in the process. Some people don't understand why I work harder than I have to and spend more time than I should afford tasks. But it's because I don't want anything I do to go to waste. It's never just about getting a grade or finishing what needs to be done. I want everything I do to be something I can look back on fondly and say, I made that. Part of me is within that. Oh, it's kind of nice. So this this bucket list of stuff, honestly, I don't know if this was like an effective essay, but I just wanted to show how many various different things that I like to do and um, how they're all different and how I really try to do my best and everything. And then I kind of just tacked on like a moral of the story at the end. Honestly, this last paragraph is kind of nice. I, I, I gotta admit, it's kind of nice. It's, and it's still true. I, I sometimes overdo things and it's not, always, it's not always like worth it, but I, I don't really want to make things that don't mean anything, you know, so. All right, going to the third essay. What is your greatest talent or skill? So this one, I just, I love writing. So I just wanted to talk about writing and that's what I chose to show off through this essay. Just as an artist develops their skill by doodling in the margins of their notepaper over many years, I have developed my aptitude for writing by scribbling down words every moment I get. The earliest I remember writing was after I graduated from Mrs. Ellis's three-year-old preschool class, when I began writing pen pal letters to her, a correspondence that lasted almost 10 years. I began to see words as an instrument for storytelling. I wanted to create books that affected people the same way books affected me. From the age of 11, I began participating yearly in National Novel Writing Month. I dabbled in poetry and travels. 
Inspired by E.E. E. Cummings, I tried putting words every which where. However, I eventually realized that my strength was not in fiction, but writing based on real life events. While writing a memoir about my time in Science Olympiad, the words flowed out of me like never before. I had struck a special chord. The sound called me to explore journalistic writing in college and pen another memoir-esque piece in the form of 22 letters. There's one piece of writing that was special to me because it demonstrated the true power of words to cause change. There was a boy in my high school from Belgium named Julian, and I will never forget how the work of a single-paged handwritten letter improved his education. Unfortunately, in transition from Belgium, he hadn't been placed in the appropriate math class, and he confided in me that he felt like he was babysitting freshmen and learning math he already knew. Since English wasn't his first language, I volunteered to write a letter to the school to get it fixed. I called upon every persuasive tactic I could muster. I laid out his case. A week later, he told me that they had changed his class, despite the official records being against him. The way my words tangibly changed his situation for the better is a victory I will always remember. I will never stop writing because I know and wield the power of it. Yeah, so I don't know if this uh, essay was like really the strongest. It kind of went everywhere for the first couple paragraphs. I, this was kind of me trying to answer the question of developing and demonstrating that talent over time. Honestly, they don't look that good now that I'm looking at it, but it's not like I could have written it any better. What do you improve? Like... I'm not that smart. I can't write any better than this. Despite this being about writing, I can't write any better than this. I think the punchline here is definitely the story. Um, Julian, if you're watching this, hi. Uh, he's probably not. I kind of dramatized it a little, obviously, but I used the story to show not only just how I used writing to do something meaningful, but like a moral lesson I've learned from it and how I've realized the power of writing. All right. Last essay, significant educational opportunity. For this essay, I picked the fact that I graduated high school a year early and espoused it as an opportunity I took advantage of. Um, I think it doesn't really come through in my essay, but I use the space to talk about what kind of perspective it has given me and what kind of perspective I could bring to a student body. Most people, upon hearing that I graduated from high school one year early, automatically assume I'm really smart, which is why I usually hide that fact when meeting people. Reality is, I was given the opportunity because I was homeschooled and took classes considered high school level in middle school, allowing me to get ahead of the normal progression. However, even though I finished high school early, I had no idea where I wanted to go or what I wanted to study. I didn't even apply to colleges. Upon my mama's suggestion, I thumbed through the community college catalog and I was surprised at the number of classes offered that interested me. I spent two semesters exploring everything from physics and architecture to Korean and journalism. The extra year gave me time to explore my interests and find my path, but that wasn't all. Montgomery College has a wildly diverse student body with so many people around me to learn from. The people in my classrooms include people like me out of high school, of course, but there are also people readjusting to civilian life after years of military service, people from international countries, high schoolers getting ahead of the curve, and adults with law degrees and more wisdom than me. Every person I meet has something to teach me, and I would have never had the opportunity to hear their stories had I gone to a four-year college as a freshman, surrounded by other freshmen. Now and then I've felt lonely over these past two years because there isn't anyone like me. In my area, nobody considers community college. Everyone behind me is in high school, and everyone ahead of me has left university. I experienced so many things that I would have missed had I not graduated high school early and attended Montgomery College. but. I've also realized what I need in a four-year school going forward. I've loved being around people not like me, but now I need people like me. Yeah, I actually checked the PDF of the essays I submitted, and this is actually how I submitted it. I had two throughs in there. I think the message I was going for in this essay was pretty good. I don't know if I conveyed it as powerfully as I could have. But yeah, I think this is the main point. I had so many experiences that I never could have had if I just had gone to university as normally expected of every other kid. And to be honest, that's why I still look back on Montgomery College as some of my favorite times. Um, this, this, as this paragraph here is a little bit emo and kind of out of place, <laughs> but um, I think I was just emotional at the time and I really was feeling kind of frustrated and fed up at the time because I was feeling alone and I didn't have a sense of anywhere I belonged. And this is what I kind of hoped for in 
by going to university. And since going to UCLA, it didn't turn out quite that way, but yeah, this is, uh, I would say it's a little bit out of place, but you know, it was how I was feeling, so. I can't remember how many people I had read over these, if anybody at all. And I, cer I certainly went over them a lot before turning them in, but not for that long because they didn't exist for that long before the deadline. <laughs> and yeah, remember that these essays went one for one for one for acceptance, waitlist, and rejection. So who knows if I did good or not? Who knows how much weight was put on these essays versus the rest of my application? Who knows what the admissions officers thought as they plowed through the 160th essay that day? All I know is that I'm proud of who I showed I was through these and yeah, showing myself as someone who loves communications and data science, someone who does tons of crazy random things of all kinds, someone who loves writing, and someone who has a really diverse experience at college. Mm -hmm. I think that was a good survey of who I was, so. Now for some advice for those of you writing essays out there right now. First of all, whether or not you're doing well at writing these so far, I want you to know it's okay. Yeah, so I'm really passionate about wrecking the perfect student image of every top school attender. I feel like a lot of the people who go to top colleges and make these kinds of videos appear so infallible. But I just can't relate to people who have a laundry list of things they did to get into college. I can't relate to caring about having a good GPA or doing a lot of extracurriculars. I love showing every way that I'm not an example of a perfect student. I'll probably talk about this more another time, but it's okay to be not trying so hard all the time. It's okay to not have it all figured out, and it's okay to not be on the same path as everyone else. And I'd love to be the walking example of that. So when everyone else is working on their college essays, that gargantuan determiner of their futures, I want you to know that there are some people who are not doing modelistically perfect out there. Yes, I've been blessed with the ability to easily succeed at the school system, but the school system is about listening to lectures in quiet classrooms and taking tests with multiple choice questions and short answer questions. And excelling in that exact format doesn't come naturally to everyone. So it isn't fair from the start. And apart from school coming easily to me, I think I'm really not a hard worker. Sometimes you just get lucky. I really shouldn't have gotten into UCLA pretty much. And I want everyone to know that even if you work hard, sometimes it won't work out. And there are people out there who don't perfectly work hard, and everything still turns out fine in the end. No disaster will happen if you are not the best student. It's not that I don't deserve to be at UCLA, I do. I did something to get here, but there is no way I could have controlled the outcome. 1% out of state odds, 11% communication major odds. I am not extraordinary, and that is a fact. I did not have the most shining and sparkly application. But I put forth my best me, and whether or not the luck falls in my favor is then out of my control. That's why you shouldn't base your self-worth in the strength of your college apps or the decisions colleges send. Because you can't control it. How come you would let yourself feel at fault for something that wasn't your fault? All that to say, there's someone out there who hasn't started the essays yet, and they don't know where to start. Well, please don't be like me and wait until the last day to write your essays, unless you really want to roll the dice. I mean, I didn't want to wait till the last day, but my lack of self-discipline caused things to transpire that way, so... I guess I can't judge. If that happens to you, I wish you luck. If you're having a hard time getting started, ask yourself what's stopping you from getting started. If you identify the problem, then you can work out a solution that will slowly get you unstuck. For me, it was the fact that I felt like there was nothing really special about me. I felt like, how do I stand out from the crowd when I feel like I'm just ordinary? I don't have any crazy life experiences. I can't lie and act like I am head over heels for academics because I'm not. I didn't do a lot of extracurriculars. I didn't do any volunteering. How did I contribute to my community? I don't know. I know I need to seem special, but I felt like there's nothing noteworthy to talk about. But it's just something you kind of got to spin, right? So if you're stuck, start by brainstorming. You can't start because you think of an idea and it's not perfect enough. You know it won't do, so you chuck it out. And you keep thinking. You keep waiting for the right idea to come. You can't do that! Because then every time you start thinking, you're starting from zero again. To brainstorm, collect all your ideas. Every possible topic. The ones you have already rejected. The stupid ones. The ones you know you aren't going to write. Think about what you want to say about yourself. What's most important that a college knows about you? Put it all together and slowly gather it. When you look at your stupid ideas, something will start to come out. The important thing here is that you're not trying to write your essays from a blank page. You're at least starting from trash, which can evolve. You can't start making something from nothing. 
And as to how to write the essay, don't overthink the word choice of grammar. Write how you usually write. Don't write for English class. Make sure your spelling and grammar is right, but don't obsess over whether to phrase it this way or that. Just say it how it came out. And when it's the way you're talking from your stream of consciousness, that's you. And what kind of content do you put in? Well, first answer the prompt and put your spin on it that only you can spin because you're you. And then make it morally appealing to the reader of the essay. Show how it makes you a more mature human. How has your interest changed you? What have you learned from your experiences? And where does it inspire you to go next? Yeah, so I'm here to tell you it's not worth stressing over every detail because it's not all in your control anyway. It's okay to be having a hard time with these essays. Think simply and it won't be as complicated as it seems. I hope you guys got something out of this video today, whether that's advice or entertainment. If you have any more questions, just curious about me or the essays I wrote, or if you want some advice, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to respond to you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. By the way, doesn't everyone hate word counts? Like, you write something great and then you realize you had to get under the word count and you had to trim the fat and you're like trying to take words out of your sentences while maintaining the sentence and then you're realizing like, oh, I'm gonna have to cut entire sentences and like you really like all of it though and you don't know what's gonna go but I mean in the end when someone reads the essay they won't know what wasn't there.